Week eight of the fantasy football season is upon us. It doesn't matter if you have underperforming players, injured players, or players on by. There's some guys we need to take a look at out there. Let's hit the waiver wire. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jake Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully, everybody is uh, doing well out there in YouTube land. Welcome to week eight of the fantasy football season. Talking about some waiver wire ads. It doesn't matter, like I said in the opening. Maybe you have some, some of these players on buys. Maybe you own somebody on the Falcons, the Cowboys, the Chargers, the Titans, and you'll be without them this week. Maybe you have somebody dealing with an injury, maybe like a Sony Michelle, even a Marshawn Lynch. You need to find some value out there to try to get you by here the next few weeks, just so you don't lose any ground here second half of the season going into the playoff run for your fantasy football team. And I got a list of names here. I'm gonna break the rules on one of them because it's over 50% owned, but I've been putting him in the show for the past few weeks and he's not going anywhere. He's gonna stay here, but let's get into the list. I don't wanna take a whole lot of your guys' time. Let's hit the waiver wire here in week eight. All right, now typically on this show, I like to keep this list all to players who are owned in less than 50% of leagues. I'm trying to get as many people out there that you guys have a chance to go and get. Now, yes, obviously league size plays a, a factor in this. Uh, some people like certain teams and they'll stash certain players. So I understand not all these guys may be available, but I'm trying to keep under that 50% rule. With that being said, I'm going to break said rule with the number one guy, but he's only owned in 51% of leagues. So I'm not really breaking the rule. I'm kind of like bending it a little bit but you know it's my show my, my my i mean i can do i can break those rules but anyway we're gonna start off with mitch magic i've talked about him here on this show a couple weeks and he's finally starting to get over this 50 percent own mark so sadly this may be the last time he makes it on the waiver wire show but it's deserved the guy has absolutely balled out his last three games he's thrown for over 300 yards in those three games he has 11 touchdown passes one more scrambling yes he does have three interceptions but this past week against the, the new england patriots we kind of saw something a little different with mitch trubisky and yes he's kind of been that, that guy who's capable of scrambling he just doesn't really rely on it well, this week he put it together, six carries, but he had 81 yards and a touchdown. And he kind of looked like a running back out there, weaving in and out of traffic, trying to get the extra yards. The guy was fighting for the yardage. And if he can continue this, if he can continue this mobility and really try to add this to the weekly part of his game, this is what gives the Russell Wilsons, the Cam Newtons, all that added value. It's the rushing ability. And he showed it this week that he's capable of it. He has some decent matchups coming up with the Jets, the Bills, the Lions, and then the Vikings. Uh, it's something where they're going to have to continue to throw in this offense. Jordan Howard looked good at times last week. Of course, he scored a touchdown probably because he's on everybody's bench but you know what i mean it's it's an offense that's going to allow him to to give him that opportunity i should say for a high ceiling they're not airing it out all the time they're giving him short intermediate passes and these playmakers are making plays for him he's getting credit for the stats like i said three straight games over 300 yards passing mitch magic is here to stay now is he here to stay for the rest of the season that's debatable but we're gonna ride this wave just like we did the fitz magic craze and I'm picking up Mitchell Trubisky, and if nothing else, stashing him on my bench. Uh, he's definitely, definitely worth an ad this week. Kenyon Barner, running back for the New England Patriots, is next up on the list, and he's definitely something we need to take a look at and take a look at quickly. Now, I'm not a huge Patriots fan by any means, but when I saw Sony Michelle go down with a knee injury, uh, my fantasy soul died a little bit on the inside. I've been a huge fan of Sony Michelle here the past few weeks, picked him up in as many leagues as I could you know, a couple weeks back because I we, we could see the breakout coming, right? We kind of saw the writing on the wall, especially once Rex Burkhead went out but now he's going to miss some time reports are coming out that it's not a serious knee injury which is good but he may miss a few weeks if that's the case james white and now kenyon barner get a huge bump in that offense now barner came in after the injury this past week didn't do a whole lot had 10 carries for 36 yards against the tough run defense of the chicago bears and it's going to continue to be tough at times in this schedule the good thing about it though it's the new england patriots and this offense always finds a way to put things together they always score points they always put them in position to have goal line touches whatever it may be kenyon barner's going to get an opportunity now does he automatically catapult up into this running back two, running back one stratosphere no probably not 
But if you have somebody on by, if you have somebody injured, he could be a decent flex play for you. Uh, James White is the one who's going to get a huge bump in value. He's he's a solid high end running back two right now in PPR leagues. He may even be low end running back one. But Kenyon Barner is going to get some touches. He's going to get some work. And this position for the New England Patriots has proven to be beneficial and successful. And I expect Kenyon Barner to have some of that success here for the next few weeks. We just need to monitor uh, Sony Michelle going forward. I'm not going out and spending a high waiver claim or spending a lot of my fab budget on Kenyon Barner because it's just going to be temporary. We know this won't last. Uh, Sony Michelle will be back, but if you need a stopgap, if you need a Band-Aid, if you need something just to stop the bleeding temporarily because of bye weeks or injuries, Kenyon Barner is worth a look. Now let's move on to the dysfunctional family of the Oakland Raiders and talk about what's going to happen in their running game now that they may be without Marshawn Lynch for a few weeks. We got Doug Martin and Jalen Richard. Are either one of these guys somebody who you can plug right into your lineup? Possibly. They do run heavily in Oakland. I mean, Marshawn Lynch was getting carries in this offense. He On uh, three occasions, he had 18-plus carries. It's something where they have the opportunity to run the ball. And in standard leagues, Doug Martin is probably the safer bet. He's probably going to be somebody who gets more touches. However, Jalen Richard is somebody who I think may be more successful with the amount of touches that he gets. He's a little bit more efficient. Yes, he's had a fumbling issue in the past, but he he is the one who I see with the largest value going forward. He's had double-digit fantasy point games so far four times this season in six weeks uh, in PPR leagues, of course, and he's definitely somebody who has a lot of added value going forward. Uh, Coming here out of the bye week, they got the Indianapolis Colts. The San Francisco 49ers, Los Angeles Chargers, Arizona Cardinals, all decent matchups for Jalen Richard to go out there and put up some points. If you had Marshawn Lynch, you can go out there, grab Jalen Richard. You're not going to lose a whole lot of value. Richard has the big playability. He gets the bonus for the, the, the pass catching upside, and he's who I would target in this backfield going forward. Doug Martin hasn't really had an opportunity, hasn't really been used much. Jalen Richard, to me, gets the bulk of the upgrade here, and he's who I'm targeting for the Oakland Raiders moving forward here for the next few weeks let's talk about another running back now let's talk about Raheem still not a must start most dirt of the San Francisco 49ers no no I did not make that nickname up somebody said it in the comment section of a video last week and I totally just stole it I really really wish I remember who said it because I would give you credit for it but just know deep down this is me giving you credit for it I did not come up with it however let's talk about I mean where did this guy come from I mean, I don't. I didn't even hardly know who he was before this season, and now he's come out for two straight weeks and been somewhat productive in the amount of volume he's been given. Two weeks ago against Green Bay, 12 carries, 87 yards. This past week against a tough Rams defense, seven carries for 59 yards. The guy has been somewhat consistent, and he's getting close to that 7 to 15 touches a week that makes him all of a sudden flex play possible. Now, is he somebody that you go out and you grab off the waiver wire, spend a lot of money? money on and then throw him in your lineup no he's not however he's somebody that you can definitely add right now as a possible you know fifth running back maybe on your roster Matt Breida is not exactly 100% healthy and if anything were to happen to him Raheem Mostart's going to get the bulk of the work in San Francisco which has had somewhat of a productive running game so far this season he's definitely worth an add and also this coming up week who do they play One of the worst run defenses in all of football, the Arizona Cardinals, then followed by the Oakland Raiders. It could be a couple good weeks here for the San Francisco running game. And Raheem, still not a must-start, Mostert, deserves to be looked at here for week eight on the waiver wire. Like I said, though, don't go out and spend a high waiver claim. Uh, Spend a lot of your fab budget on Raheem Mostert. Go out there, pick him up for cheap, stash him on your bench. You never know. He may turn into somebody who's got some value here second half of the season wide receivers now and the first guy i'm going to talk about is probably who you can get on the cheap this week depending on what type of league you're in and how serious your league mates are i'm going to talk about tyrell williams again of the los angeles chargers now i said that when i started off because he's on a bye week this week they're not playing so depending on on your league and how close people look at their projected stats for the week or how many times they've been added Tyrell Williams may be somebody who's a little bit farther down that list because he's not going to play but he's somebody who you could grab this week possibly for cheap like I said stash him on your bench and it looks like he has regained that number two role in Los Angeles now we said in the preseason we thought this was going to be the other Williams dude and talk about Mike Williams however Mike Williams hasn't had more than one catch in a game since week five 
Three out of the last four games, he's only had one catch. Now, he did have a touchdown for 55 yards last week, but that's one big busted home run play away from having nothing. All of a sudden, Tyrell Williams, back-to-back weeks, he's got uh, 118 receiving yards in both games, three touchdowns over the past two weeks, a combined total of 47 fantasy points in PPR leagues over these past two weeks. And he, like I said, he's regained that number two role. Philip uh, Philip Rivers is looking for him deep. He's getting those big opportunities. He's not going to go out there and be a huge PPR volume type stud, but he's somebody who's all of a sudden taken away that touchdown upside in that offense from Mike Williams. It's gone Tyrell's way. They're on bye week this week, but they're going to come back against the Seattle Seahawks and Oakland Raiders. He's definitely somebody you could stash on your bench, give you some depth, and could be a possible bye week replacement here down the line. Next up is going to be my ad for the week for the wide receiver position. I'm talking about Traquan Smith of the New Orleans Saints. Yes, I get it. He did not have a huge week seven, but I look at it this way. This just bought you one more week to go out there, grab him, and stash him because this guy could really carry you down the stretch for all your bye weeks and injury replacements from the wide receiver position. He is an elite talent. He hasn't really had the opportunity, but we didn't know what was going to happen after Ted Ginn went out. We didn't know if Traquan Smith or possibly Cameron Meredith gets that bump in volume. Well, Cameron Meredith had zero targets last week, which really leads me to believe that the six that Traquan Smith got kind of inch him closer to that number two spot here in New Orleans. Yes, Ben Watson had a decent week against his former team, but that's the best game he's had so far this season. Traquan Smith, in his next few games, he's got Minnesota, Los Angeles, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, and Atlanta. These are a bunch of games where he could go out there and do some serious damage, and if you don't grab him this week, it may be too late. The defense uh, that the Saints play are always going to be focused on Kamara and Thomas. Traquan Smith should see a lot of single coverage, and like I said before, He's an elite talent that just needs the opportunity. The opportunity could be coming. Traquan Smith is definitely worth an ad. Stash him on your bench. You could end up with a, a an elite, you know, flex play wide receiver here, second half of the season. He's got total breakout potential. Two more guys from the wide receiver position. Let's talk about the Miami Dolphins, Danny Amendola and Hakeem Grant. I get it. I'm not too excited to even be talking about them, much less wanting to add them to my fantasy football team. But if you're struggling with injuries or bye weeks or whatever it may be, underperforming players, these two guys are going to get an opportunity this week. Albert Wilson, he's going to be out for a few weeks. Kenny Stills with a groin injury, he may not make the quick turnaround for Thursday. Devontae Parker, and it's Devontae Parker, who cares? These two guys are going to get the bulk of the work here in Miami. There's not a whole lot of other options. Denny Amendola, the last two weeks under Brock Osweiler, he has a total of 14 receptions, over 100 yards and a touchdown, double-digit fantasy points two straight weeks, and I can see that continuing here again. Like I said, he's not going to be somebody to go out there and, and put up huge, huge numbers week to week. But if you're looking for a PPR option, Danny Amendola is a decent add this week on the short turnaround for Thursday night. Hakeem Grant is more of that home run guy, more of the standard league guy. Somebody you may need for like a a DFS lineup possibly, but he's also somebody who's going to have a lot of potential this week. And they're both decent ads, especially if you're in deeper leagues. Next up, let's talk about the guy who took the value away from Jermaine Curse this past week. Let's talk about Chris Herndon, tight end for the New York Jets. And I know not a whole lot of people really know who Chris Herndon is. Hasn't really been productive up until these past two weeks where he's had two straight touchdown weeks. This past week against Minnesota, four catches, 42 yards, and a touchdown for 14 fantasy points. And now he's somebody we need to pay attention to. With Terrell Pryor gone, with Quincy Anunwa hurt, it looks like Chris Herndon may be the guy going forward that they look at in the red zone. They have a great matchup against the Chicago Bears coming up this uh, week, week eight. If you're in desperate need of a tight end, he's a decent option. It's a lot easier to throw on the Bears than it is to run against the Bears and Chris Herndon could get a few opportunities to give you guys a decent fantasy week this week like I said I get it but maybe you had Austin Hooper maybe you were struggling in the streaming and you had Jeff Swaim maybe you no, nobody was starting Antonio Gates you know what I mean though if you're if you're desperate for a tight end I understand this is one of the thinnest positions I've ever seen in fantasy football in a very long time maybe you're just trying to look for that upside guy Chris Herndon could be that guy coming up here for the next few weeks. He looks like he's going to get the opportunity. And like I said, he's produced decent numbers here the past two weeks. He's definitely worth an add from the tight end position. 
All right, those were a few of my top ads here for week eight for the waiver wire show. Really appreciate your guys' support. Make sure you're checking out the other videos on this channel this week. I got start sits, maybe even a few surprise episodes this week. Going to try to get those out to you guys. Plus, don't forget, Saturday evenings I've been doing live shows the past two weeks, and they have been a lot of fun getting to interact with you guys. I've been doing about an hour, hour and 15 minutes every Saturday night, so be on the lookout for that. If you're subscribed to the channel and you don't have the little bell button clicked for notifications, click it right now. I'll give you a second to do it. Okay, thank you. Now you're going to know as soon as I go live, we have a lot of fun on the live shows, a lot of interactions. I get to let it flow for about two, three minutes or until I pass out. But hey, really appreciate your guys' support. Make sure you guys are subscribing here, liking the video. It really helps me out. And I look forward to talking to you here later in the week. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.